This is my first go round with the Prince's mixture, and I learned a lot. I made an egregious error at the very end of the fly. I managed to save it, but it's not what it could have been. But then again, they never are. I wanted the wing to be more blue on the bottom, more bustardy in the middle, and more red on the top. So if you look at the um, at what I've done here, starting at the bottom, there are two blue, then one red, one bustard, then two blue, one red, one bustard, then one blue, one red, two bustard, one blue, one red, two bustard, then one blue, two red, one bustard, one blue, two red, one bustard, and finally one blue, three red on top. Here I've put both wings together, and I'm kind of comparing it with the, the hook, making sure that they're going to work, checking both sides, making sure that the wing's not too short. Many times I'll, I'll first marry the wings and get a pair of wings, and then I'll size the hook to the wings. Because as we all know, the wing is the thing. Here I'm prepping... Uh, a topping, this, this topping from tie-in point to tip is one and a half times the gap of the hook. I've already measured it. And this one, I've, I've sized just a bit bigger and when it gets uh, pulled under the thread wraps, when the root gets pulled under, it'll be the right size. I've opened up the tail by crimping the back of the stem on the first third of the feather. Right there, my loop didn't fall the right way to capture the, the stem, so I'm twisting the bobbin up so my loop will now fall to the left and I can catch it. Let's tie it in with three loose wraps. Actually, they're, they're more medium wraps, not, not completely loose. Tug some of the root under the thread wraps and then adjust everything. And this adjustment period is very important. The tail has to be dead on. If you think about it, that the tail dictates the rest of the fly. And the wing and the topping are never going to match up if the tail's crooked. There's, there's two parts of a full dress salmon fly that have got to be perfect or you'll have no chance at successfully finishing the fly. The tail and the underwing both have to be dead on. So spend a lot of time getting them right. Trimming the butt here. Now I've got a right and a left single macaw strand. Back to back, I'm kind of mounting them just like I would mount a, a wet fly wing almost. Really didn't know what to do with these two strands that are um, talked about in the recipe. So I just put them back to back and t 
Tied them in just as you see them. This is a um, Chatterer sub that I made from uh, ringneck pheasant feather uh, and a wing burner. I dyed the feather t twice. Now I'm tying in the ostrich hurl for the butt. And I, when I tie this in, I want the stem to face down as I tie it in and the, the flues to angle up like so. And that way, when I take my first turn, the, the stem will lead as, as I wrap the butt. And that gives me a very dense but which I like. You don't want to yank the the uh, ostrich hurl forward too much when you tie it off. Otherwise the uh, the butt itself can get stretched out. And you'll see some white showing through, which we don't want. Trimming the butts, tying them in. I've taken the thread all the way to the front and then all the way back to the butt and uh, trimmed a piece of flat silver tinsel and tying, tying it in on the bottom of the hook. Now I want to take the thread to a point that's about midway. Because there's two sections to this and they're separated by a joint. So what I'll do here, I'll take it, I'll, I'll guesstimate where halfway is. Then I'll measure from the back of the butt up to almost up to the eye. And in this case, about 4.2. So I want my, I want my uh, thread to be stationed right at around two. And it, it was I guess right the reason I want two is the butt takes up the 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 second it's not a butt it's a joint the uh, second ostrich hurl joint um, that I put on this fly takes up a little bit of space so two is is pretty much dead on where I want to be when I tie off the flat tinsel. And those are millimeters. It's a lot more precise scale than trying to use inches. I'm not really concerned about the number of thread wraps here because there's going to be an ostrich hurl joint over it. So I want to tie in this tinsel well. All right, this next section are going to be the veiling feathers. And this is a strange little mixture. 
hence the name, I think, Prince's Mixture, of Toucan and Indian Crow. I don't know that I've seen this on any other fly. There may be another fly that I'm unaware of that has these body veilings. This is a CDC feather dyed sulfur that I use as a sub and it's, to be honest, it's not the greatest sub. You see how I curved the feather a little bit with my thumbnail there. Now I'm, I'm tying it in, but this is just kind of a test run to size it. I've already, I've already sized it, but I just want to make sure it's going to extend to the, basically to the back of the butt is where I want it to go. And, um, That will work, but as you can see, this feather is very wide, and I want to I want to streamline the feather a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove it, and using saliva between my thumb and index finger, I'm just going to stroke it. And form it like that and, put, and then put it aside to dry. And I'll do the same thing with the, uh, uh, the one that's going to go on the bottom ultimately. Now, as it turns out, this technique didn't really help me all that much. And I'm going to be working on a little better way of doing this. Over time, as this feather dries out, it spreads out again. And that's about the way I want it to look. But as you can see, it's spreading out already. Now I'm going to tie in the one on the bottom. I've already prepped it, flattened the stem. Put a little curve in the in the front of it with my thumbnail on the on the inside of the feather. And that's more or less what I what I want to see. important to do your best to get these centered the perspective you have to have when doing these is you've got all the time in the world as opposed to production tying or professional tying this is this is the opposite of that. You're not trying for any kind of speed here. As a matter of fact, you want to slow down. You want to do things over, remove them, try again, whatever you have to do to make it right. And it's very difficult if you've tied a lot of flies uh, over you know, fishing flies, just ordinary flies, to make yourself do this. But it's, it's probably the, the most important thing that you need to do. It's a, it's a game of perfect. And if things aren't perfect, uh, you're just never happy with the fly. It may have aspects that, of the, that you really like, but from, from then on, your eye goes to the thing that's not right.
These are Indian crow subs that I've made. I will be doing a video on, on subs. In fact, um, I'll be doing more than one because each, each sub has its own issues. I've, I'm, I've never been happy with the toucan sub that I've used and I uh, hope to come up with something to improve that. It's my understanding that real toucan is harder to deal with than a sub. It's apparently a difficult feather to work with. I wouldn't know. I've never used real toucan. But I know how I want the sub to behave, and uh, feathers sticking out everywhere, fibers sticking out everywhere is not what I have in mind. You can contain the fibers a little bit with saliva as you proceed with the fly, but it's kind of a losing proposition, to be honest. All right, this is the middle joint. Again, ostrich hurl tied in just as we did the butt. Stem leading. Binding it, binding the, uh, in this case, the tip down under the hook. Now, a lot of guys tie these in by the tip. I don't. I tie them in by the butt. Um, it really doesn't matter much. But I want you to be aware that other tires do it differently. And that goes for any of the, any of the techniques I show. There, there's always more than one way to skin a cat and uh, I'm not one for my way or the highway experiment around I constantly try different things trying to find a better way to do it there's always a better way to do it here's the flat silver tinsel for the front section of the fly it's tying it underneath the hook again this is well waxed thread and right now I'm waxing it again as you'll see it's very difficult to wrap wide metal tinsel down a slope without having it separate and this is a uh, something that can help it's not a panacea and as you'll see it doesn't completely work for me here but I come close with it and that's all we need you'll see what happens here but keep in mind we're under some um, extreme magnification here Right there, there's that split. Now, it will get covered by some things. If there was a way to avoid that, I, I would have done it. 
I just couldn't figure out a way to do it. I actually, I actually did that twice and changed the underbody a little bit, trying to make less of a slope. Over this front section, I've duplicated the body veilings from the rear section, just identical. And now I'm going to get ready to start on the underwing here. This is golden pheasant tail. A left and a right. Tied in just like you'd tie in a wing. Straddling the upper third of the hook. You can see how that two cans sticking out at the bottom there. Right here, I move the underwing back just a little bit to try to make less of a space between it and the rest of the main body. I'm humping this wing a little bit to get it lower. Off camera, I added strips of a black cockatoo sub that I made and um, Amherst pheasant tail. Now I'm getting ready to tie in the hackle. I'm tying this in a little bit ahead of the underwing, not right up against it. That way when I wind it, it won't get into the underwing and mess it up. The fibers will cover the space in between and the, the other thing I'm trying to achieve by doing this is I want to crowd the eye quite a bit on this. And I want this hackle to, to, to extend all the way to the eye. I'm really trying to force this hackle back as I wind so that it's very much uh, tightly spaced. Next I'll cut the stem but my thread is is hung up in the hackle pliers and take me a second to free it up here. There it is. Now I've got just the stem. Isolated. And these wraps are actually going back into the hackle. That's so I can cleanly get at the, the stem and trim it. Like so. Take a couple more wraps back just to make sure this hackle's bound down well. Now, as you can see, I'm trying to pull the hackle down into a beard, but being very careful not to get into the underwing. It's incredibly easy to do. I've done it many times. Brought out the little crochet hook end of a, a, a tool that I use all the time that I like very much. It's a dental tool, actually. Ron Lucas was selling these tools for a while. I don't know if he still is. It's a great little, little tool. I don't know the name of it. It's got a spoon-shaped flat side and then this little hook side. And I originally bought it as, as a burnishing tool. I don't use it for that anymore, but I use it all the time for other things. It's, a, it's just a handy, handy tool to have.
There's <clears throat> one that popped up there. I'll get a couple of these strays. I'll pluck them out. Whenever you whenever you use tweezers like this, hold the thread under tension with the other hand. It's important. Got rid of those. I'll hold everything down and put some heavier wraps on it. If you want a very small head, take a couple of serious wraps, glue them, then take a double-edged razor blade and trim out all the guinea in front of those wraps. Yeah, it's a guts move, but no guts, no glory. I'm constantly looking at the fly as, as I add stages. I want to look at what I've already done because what I've already done can get messed up by what I'm doing now. That's the nature of full-dress salmon flies. going to mount my wings. I'm using the middle finger of my left hand here. When I have a big wide wing, I'm most comfortable doing that. And notice how level my hand is. It's almost parallel with the wing, almost parallel with the shank of the hook is the best way to think of it. My left elbow is down. And what I'm doing is I'm gradually adding loops, tightening upwards, all the while holding the pinch with my left hand. Now you notice some of the fibers at the back have separated. And um, it's very easy to panic at this point and think that you've blown it, but don't. Um, you can do a lot with a set of wings when they're on the fly. As you can remarry things, fix things. Saw so, so how easy that was to fix. So if if you get some splits, and, and you'll you'll get some splits. Um, try to fix them on the fly before remounting. You know, starting over. Especially if you, if if you like the look of what you've done, work with it and see if you can fix things. Keep in mind that splits up near the front, if you get those, uh, will be covered typically by cheeks or something. So you don't necessarily need to worry about those. Swing's got a nice hump. I'm going to go with it. And again, constantly adjusting. There are uh, sides of teal on this fly. I'm using uh, pintail instead. It get it. It's a little bit bigger, typically, and this is a big fly. It's a six aught hook. I had a big wing, so I used a big hook. And that it's surprising, but. In, in my opinion, big flies are much easier than small flies if you have the materials. It's tough to get even a three-aught fly to look like anything. A six-aught fly on, almost automatically looks spectacular just due to its sheer size. Um, Whereas making a, a, a two or three aught fly look spectacular is difficult. Now I'm going to add the mallard roof. 
And I've got a left and a right, the left forming the near strip, and I'm tying both strips in almost vertically here. Again, a little bit in front of the wing, just a little bit. Then I hold the very front of both the wing and the and the bronze mallard and stroke it down and try to get it to adhere to the wing. This is where I totally blew it. In advance of of tying on the topping, I tried to trim some of the butts off the top of the fly, the uh, the bronze mallard butts. And in doing so, managed to cut the thread. And to be honest, I was a broken man. I uh, immediately stopped and um, took the next day off. I called it a, it was kind of a mental health day. And I got back to the fly and I, I put uh, some turns a black thread on there because you know once you do that there's there's really no coming back from it your wing will never be the same and this wing never was uh don't get me wrong it's not terrible it's passable which is why i'm even showing this to you but as i said in the beginning not what it could have been But I got through that, got, got a topping on. Right here, I'm tying in the horns. Notice how they tie in. This is a, a left, a macaw left strand, yellow on the bottom with a, a strip of blue showing on top. And, and this makes up the near horn. Here I'm adjusting the angle. The far horn will use a right, and it's tied in the same way with the yellow on the bottom with a strip of blue showing on top. And if you tie them in this way, it just works out beautifully. The, uh, the tips will angle inward, and it works every time. Now, you can do other things with, uh, with horns. You can use just lefts if you want. Curve, curve the uh, strand with your uh, thumbnail, etc. Play with it. Get it the way you want it. But this, this method is far superior to, to messing with the strands and trying to get them to angle properly. This, this thing just works. Now here I'm evening up the tips. The, the far tip is too long. And notice when I tug on, when I tug on this butt, I am steadying my tweezer hand, my right hand, with my left. You see that? where my left hand is, is steadying the right hand. That's a technique I use all the time. Um, and it's not because I've got the shakes, which admittedly some mornings I do. But it, uh, it just stabilizes everything. And that way you don't inadvertently grab some of the mallard roof you, you can be very precise. Kind of looking at things here. And it looks like I need to tug maybe another. Well, actually, I'm changing the angle on the uh, f far horn here. Right now they're crossed. 
Um, later on, I'll, I'll put the tips together, but you can leave them crossed if you want. And I think this is going to work. Brought this fly back from the dead. Now I've glued up the thread and I'm taking diagonal wraps very slowly so that I don't get the so I don't get thread avalanching. As the glue dries, it'll help adhere. And this is the best way I've found to finish heads is with glue. I used, I used to do, there was a time when I used no wax, no glue. And uh, to be honest, that was dumb. When you get a thread avalanche, everything goes. Your wing is destroyed. So you want to avoid the thread avalanche at all costs. And so I'm keeping my wraps very diagonal. See that? Everything is angled. Do another whip finish. Cut the thread. And here's the finished fly. The wing now has a little bit of a warp in it. It's, it's not obvious, but it is to me. And uh, there are other things I would have done differently, certainly. But that's always the case. All things considered, I had fun, and I hope you do too.